Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Boisterous coming to you with some Silver League sexiness out of the map, uh, Newkirk City. Spying out here in the bottom of the left hand corner, we have Boss as the Red Zerg. Down here in the bottom right hand corner, we have his opponent, Fonzie, as the Blue Terran. Fonzie. Really awesome name. And it's funny because Fonzie was Boss. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah. You see what I did there? You see what I did there? That was a joke. Yeah, I know. It was a rare here. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we'll get like two more done before the year's over, and that'll. I think that'll propel me into stardom. Let's be honest here. Everybody loves, loves bad jokes. So, ZVP on Newkirk City. This is, of course, uh, the Wings of Liberty version of this map. There is going to be no crazy roach host play. I'm sure there's going to be crazy play. Or at least I hope so, because it's a Silver League game. And let's be honest, you Silver Leaguers, don't disappoint me. I want to see your craziest cheese ever. If you do not build a command center on your opponent's natural, I am going to be disappointed. Now, of course, it looks like I might just turn out to be a little bit disappointed in Fonzie, as he has not even yet set out his proxy SCV. And I sound a little, I feel like I sound a little bit of, like, like Seinfeld right now. So I'm going to go back to Boisterous. I don't know why my voice actually fluctuates a lot when I talk so much, because I usually, usually don't talk that much. I'm kind of a silent person. And then I started doing commentaries, and now I talk a lot for about 20 minutes a day. And then I don't talk for the rest of the day, and it's very, very interesting, because everybody thinks I'm crazy, I think. Or maybe it's just I think I'm crazy and I kind of project that onto other people. And maybe I'm rambling right now and all of you people think I'm crazy. Of course, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're basically right. We do have a 15 hatch going, or er, yeah, 15 hatch going down for boss at this point. It might have been a 16 hatch, but it was really close, so whatever. I mean, YOLO, right, guys? Um, we have the refinery popping down for Fonzie, so we're going to see some type of tech play from our Terran player. This is actually a pretty early refinery for this matchup. I've been playing Terran recently, and I'm a very big proponent of the, uh, of the no gas FE as Terran. It's like three racks-ish pressure plays, um, versus any, but basically any race. I kind of suck at Terran, so I have like one build. And it's not even really that much of a build. I kind of just wing it every game and hope to God that it works. And somehow it seems to work for the most part. It, it doesn't break usually. It breaks sometimes. But, you know, that's all good. That's all good. Ever since people mentioned that I ramble a lot, I've been very self-conscious about my ramblings. Because I feel like I do. And I feel a little bit crazy. However, I think I've already talked about me being crazy this game. So, Silver Leaguers do something crazy. Nope, it's just going to be two Raxes. Alright, so we have nothing crazy coming out from either of the side. In fact, they're both very standard. And it looks like we have the Scout going down from the Overlord. It is not going to see the second refinery, which is a pretty uh, major part of information. You need to try to get out of your Terran opponent as fast as possible is when that second, uh, is if that refinery went down or not. Because if the refinery didn't go down, you can kind of estimate there's going to be a fast CC, either going down at the natural or going down right next to the natural to float up and then land at the natural. Um, but if you do see that refinery, typically you're going to see slightly later uh, gas plays. For the Zerg player, we do have Metabolic Boost just starting now. There is no pull on the drones off of the gas, so we might see some sort of quick layer play, either that or he's just lazy and in Silver League, and he didn't want to pull his drones off the gas, which is a reasonably common thing. We have eight Zerglings coming out, which is slightly more than the average six, but it won't be able to do any sort of damage to Fonzie, as, you know, he would just, you know, tap the boombox and it would all run away. And I did not really watch a lot of whatever show Fonzie was on, because, you know... I'm a 90s kid, and by 90s kid, I mean like I was four in the 90s, so I'm just going to keep making references because I know names, and then that'll be great, and that's exactly how this will go down, and it'll be awesome. We have Combat Shield going down, giving those Marines plus 10 health, which is quite a nice tactical advantage. We don't see any add-on going down on the primary uh, barracks. We have the first factory building up right now, so we might see some level of tank Marine play. Either that or he's just going to be rushing right up to a starport. We currently do not see a tech lab going down for this factory, so I could definitely see starport play coming out reasonably soon, especially with this SCV just sitting here. Either that or he's Silver League and Lazy. There's there's really only two things to happen in this game. It looks like we have a little bit of injury happening here. It's going to go very well for the time player. You know, he's going to lose a Marine, but, you know, that's worth it for, what, eight Zerglings? It's not really all that bad, especially if he starts going for Medivacs reasonably soon. It looks like we do have the uh, reactor coming down on the barracks. It looks like all he really wanted was he didn't even finish combat shields. What? He didn't... Combat shields was almost on. And he didn't... He didn't finish. 
All right, well, we have Fonzie taking the uh, Zolnaga Tower, but it would appear that these uh, Marines are about to get sniped. The face of the enemy, the poor Zergen is pouring. They are probably going to get wiped out, however, when the rest of the way to and kill off everything. So, uh, Boss does take it back, back map control and control the Zelnaga Tower. He does leave one Zergling there, just so that he can see any sort of creepy, really bad medevac drops that, for some reason, triangle up from his base into Zelnaga Tower range and then triangle back down to Boss's base. It looks like we have the third hatchery now finished up for Boss. We are going to see quite an economic advantage taken by him. Uh, Fonzie's command center is just now going down, so he's kind of fallen a little bit behind up at this point. If we look at the tech of Boss, it looks like right now it's basically just the room Roachborn coming down. Um, we do have the layer teching up currently, so we might see something interesting coming up, but honestly, I, I don't know. Um, layer play is very indefinite because it means either infestors or meters, which are very different things. It would appear that we do have the Zerglings actually managing to cancel the command center. So Fonzie is basically amazingly far behind it. Like, amazingly far behind at this point. I don't know if it's really going to be a position for him to come back into this game because, let's be honest, you just lost your command center. Your Zerg opponent is on three bases. He has roaches coming up, and basically if he just charged the front with roaches, he could probably do okay. Uh, there are two siege tanks here, which would do quite a bit of damage, but I think that if you were okay at splitting roaches, you could basically just win this fight straight up because the bunkers and a little bit of an awkward spot on the low ground for SCVs to try to defend it especially if you come in with any amount of zerglings it looks like we do have the infestation pit coming down so that could either mean a fast tech or actually just infestors now of course with the uh with the infestors that are currently on the live wings of liberty servers i'll be surprised to not see at least some level of infestor play come out because they're so good uh as opposed to the heart of the swarm server where they kind of suck i mean fungal growth you'd be surprised how bad it is with the missile timing because with the missile time there's not really that much time to split your guys and it makes chain fungling so much harder so you're gonna see a lot of very good terran players just splitting their guys before the missiles even land and then not letting chain fungals go off by splitting further as soon as the fungals wear off and you know they they basically nerfed it deep deep into the ground i think that if they go back to this kind of missile thing they should really go back to the old fungal growth which was like no damage but it locked something down for six seconds I think it was actually 8 seconds back in the day, but that's a little bit exorbitant. So I would say 6 seconds. Just no damage, just lock stuff down. Because, I, I don't know, that feels more zergy to me. And people complain about fungal growth a lot, but it, it's kind of an all-in-one spell right now. I feel like it would be better to just a lockdown. Maybe reduce the radius a little bit, keep the missiles, um, maybe slow down, in fact, their missile move speed just a little bit so that lower league players could still kind of micro against it. But other than that, don't change much. It looks like we have 14 roaches now coming out for uh, for boss, and he it, he has gone for a Nidus network, which is interesting. I could see him going for something like uh, like a lot of players have been doing recently, where they just put a Nidus worm right at the front of their opponent's base, and then they kind of just pump Zerg units into uh, into their base. Now Fonzie has had a reasonable job as has done a reasonable job as far as macro goes, but with boss's three bases, it's going to be hard for him to keep up in the next few seconds because honestly, he's going to start taking off like a madman. Looks like Fonzie has overqueued his SCBs a little bit. He should probably cancel those all down and just upgrade that to an orbital of commands. And he looks kind of like me playing Terran at this point because he's getting supply blocks like every other depot. And I basically miss every depot I try to make. There are two engineering bays currently going down for Fonzie's Marines. So we are going to see probably a Marine heavy play with a couple of tanks, but primarily just Marines. It looks like there's currently, what, five tanks on the field? There's six, there's a sixth coming out. But for every tank, there's three Marines pumping out, so I wouldn't be surprised to see even more Marines start to go down, like another barracks, with a uh, with a reactor coming out, making it you know five Marines at once. And it looks like the tank c drip is going to be able to snipe off a little bit of uh, just a couple Zerglings. And, oh, oh, is the Night Swarm coming out? Oh my god, the Night Swarm is coming out. Where's it going to pop up? Where's it going to be? 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 I doubt it's going to be up here. Where's it going to be? Come on. Come on, boss. Show me where the Night Swarm is. Oh, I'm feeling like it's either going to be here. Maybe, maybe up here. Up here would be a better spot. Or, like, here. Right there. The, the Night Swarm is right there. Did you guys see me call that? I am, like, a prophet. I am amazing at what I do for this game. It would appear that we have units now pouring out of this nice room at any second now. So we are gonna see the queens pop out first and I can see some nasty creeps gonna land go down here. And this is gonna be pretty fun. 
this is definitely going to be on the interesting side. We have the complete retreat of Fonzie's men, but all of the roaches have basically already unloaded. The only issue is, is that they actually do not yet have that speed up here. They don't really need it. They're doing quite a good job at working on these tanks. Now, of course, all of these roaches are going to go down at this point, and it really wasn't actually as many roaches as I thought it was going to be. Either that or they just took way more damage than I thought they were going to. Um, if we look at the overall killed units, uh, we have Fonzie up at 39, Boss at 20, but of course six orcers killed for Boss is a pretty good reasonable amount. Actually seven now, because his last brave at Zermling was able to was able to snipe off a very low health uh, low health player. I'm kind of interested to see the fact that the Nine Sprint still exists. Because he should really just blow it up. And there we go. We're clear that we have the Bane Nest coming up. As long as... And, and Fonzie's actually becoming a pretty good player. Like, throughout the course of this game. He started out a little bit rough when he didn't go for his expansion at all. Like, he didn't go for his expansion until, what, like the 10 minute mark? Now he's doing okay. He's not doing bad. He needs an Orbital Command here. But I'm going to let it let that slide for a little bit. Boss, of course, still in the major economic lead. He does have... You know, all of the bases. He has four right now. He has Zerglings pumping out. He has Baneling Tech done. Do we have Burrow done? Yes, we do have Burrow done. So I could see some Burrowed Banelings coming out from this player. Because that is actually an extremely popular uh, popular play in the Silver League area. As far as Fonzie goes, we have a second Nidus Worm coming up. And Fonzie needs to get better at seeing when these Nidus Worms are coming up. He does have some SCVs going up there to defend it. I think they might be able to do enough damage to get it down before any units really can start to pump out of it. Uh, Alright, so a couple units are going to come down, but I think this is going to go down. Actually, no, it does not. It's five life left. Oh my god. It looks like we have quite a few investors at this point, but they're all kind of grouped right around the same area. The refinery is going to go down. Oh no, the refinery. We have a lot of infested towns coming out because, uh, you know, he just doesn't like the war. This is probably going to do quite a bit of damage here because he did manage to throw most of those eggs right on top of the siege tank. So you're going to see quite a few siege tanks get milled down by these infested towns. Uh, so once he chunked that kill for energy, which isn't bad, uh, there's two nice purpose back in the game, which is kind of just on the funny side. He did not manage to snipe this engineering bit quite yet, however, he might burn down. SCV don't let this thing burn down. No, SCV, it's, it's gonna burn down. Oh, okay. Alright, spoke a little bit too soon there. The SCV does manage to not let it burn down. We have quite a few banelings in production out in the center. Not 19, in fact, which is, you know, that's, that's like I said, quite a few. That's quite a lot of banelings quite a bit of fun. We have two more infestors also on the way, and let's see, there's four here, there's a couple, there's like three in the Nidus network, four and then four, five, is I on the second page? No. Alright, so there's nine plus two, eleven-ish uh, infestors, which is a reasonable amount. We see him pulling all of his workers off the mineral fields, which I actually like, because in a very late game scenario, it's nice to have mineral fields in your main base that you can still mine from. Because if you end up, and you and your ar and you and your uh, enemy just absolutely trade armies, you you know, you know push really far into his base, you kill all of his expansions, and then with a, like kind of a paltry army, but an army much bigger than yours, he pushes all the way into your base, kills up to your natural, you're kind of sitting there, you're a little bit on the sketchy side, but you can still mine from these mineral patches, you can create enough Zerglings, you can break that, uh, perhaps with a couple of Banelings, and then you can win. Um, so, again, like that, we have all Burrow Banelings. This is going to be quite nice. All the Marines are going to be moving out to this tank wall. We do have a couple of meta, or one medevac and a Viking. A little bit on the weird side. Uh, it looks like a couple of Banelings are going to be going down. He knows that the Banelings are out at this point. They do not yet have centrifugal hooks. He should probably be upgrading centrifugal hooks. Centrifugal hooks is pretty good, and apparently he finished it right as I started talking about it. So, <laughs> you know, it's all good. We have plus one for all of the uh, all of the weapon classes on the ground. We have uh, ground weapons, of course, and ground melee, and then ground armor. So he's upgrading his ground units quite a bit. I would be I'm kind of surprised that he hasn't started going for any of the high high tech units. Does he even have adrenal glands? No, he does not. He could really he could really start going for adrenal glands and ultralisks, and that would be pretty nice with his army composition that he has now. Because he definitely has the investors to support that kind of thing. It would appear that the tanks are sitting in the most precarious position ever. Oh God, please, please, just once. Come on, come. On. This is mean, Fonzie. Move your marines. Oh, oh, I'm, oh, how is this happening? We have ten more banelings on the way. I can't. This army is literally on the edge of those banelings. 
really what boss should do right now is he should try to force an engagement and kind of hope that the the, uh, the marines try to juke backwards and then detonate these banelings as soon as the marines start to kind of move backwards. It looks like we might have the infestors moving in. They are going to be throwing those beat balls all over the place trying to soak up the first couple of marines. Oh my god, that was a lot of damage. Here. Not quite enough to win the fire because they're still trapped on the It looks like a nice actual up there from that banelings force will give him enough, enough oomph to take this over. He did not even lose an infestor, I don't think. There was not really a scan that went down. So we're going to see a pushback of Fonzie into his main base. And this, this is a little bit of a sketchy situation for our Terran player. I mean, it's definitely not irrecoverable, irrecoverable, because the army is fairly weak. And, you know, you have the, uh, you have the arenas. Now, of course, move, moving all of your SCDs into an attack formation against Roaches, definitely not in an applied thing, and you probably don't want to let you every unit you have sit against infested Terrans, because, alright, Fonzie's just gonna GG after losing his entire army to energy. Great, okay, well, <laughs> that was definitely an interesting game. I'm very sad that the bailing bus didn't get to go off, and if you guys, a lot of people have been telling me recently that, you know, I should probably stop skipping around with so many of the, uh, amateurish like silver to gold league replays bronze to gold league replays because you know they're like those videos don't get as many views and i looked at them i'm like they don't unless they're super interesting and certainly some of them are so i might start cutting down a little bit on my production of those games and start focusing more on the masters league play um now as soon as the forum showcase match is done i'm hoping on tacking on a fourth day onto my release schedule it'll probably be like thursday or friday um, those are the days that I have the most time to create new videos. So it'll probably be one of those two days is when I, uh, start pumping out four videos a week. Um, and of course two of those days will still be dedicated to the same bronze to, uh, gold to platinum league action that, you know, you guys have come to know and love, uh, from this channel. And also, you know, one of those days will be dedicated to more of the higher level play, the masters play, the grandmasters play, the diamond, the higher diamond play, and then one of the game, one of those days, it might be dedicated to some pro replays. I'm starting to think about dabbling into those. I mean, it used to be a big tenant on my thing that you know I didn't do pro replays. I only did replays that were submitted to me through the community, and you guys have been awesome with that. I've very rarely ever looked at my hopper and been like, well, shit, I only have like a game left. It was, I don't think I've ever had to skip a day because I did not have enough replays. And that's been awesome, and I love you guys for that. Um, but I might just start doing one pro replay a, month, a week just to see, you know, if if that's nearly as fun. You know, because it might not be, and I might just stick with this kind of like side hobby community uh, replay stuff. That's That was a little bit of rambling. so instead of continuing, I'm just going to tell you guys to uh, check me out over at youtube.com slash user slash boistersSC2, and also to remember to send your replays into boistersSC2 at gmail.com if you would like to have them commentated. Uh, so anyway guys, this is Boisterous, signing out.